Hi, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is John. Today we will respond to one audience's comment and make a video on the space charge effect. The space charge layer shares some similarities with the electrochemical double layer. We will describe the space charge effect and elaborate on its analytical solution. Halfway through, we will throw in an Easter egg to connect it with the double layer. Then we finish with a short history of the double layer models. Before we explain the space charge effect, let's review some basic defect chemistry. This is a magnesium oxide 111 plane made of alternating columns of magnesium and oxygen ions. The empty space on the left is the surface or interface. We are going to use special notations called the kruger wink notation here to describe, for example, an oxygen ion sitting on an oxygen ion site and a magnesium ion sitting on a magnesium site. The superscript X stands for zero charges. In magnesium oxide, the Schalke defect is the dominant point defect formation mechanism, where a pair of magnesium and oxygen ions move to the surface, leaving two vacancies behind, as shown in the equations here. In kruger wink notation, the new defects are described by vacancies on oxygen or magnesium sites and oxygen or magnesium ions on surface sites. The superscript dot stands for a positive charge, and the prime stands for a negative charge. For example, the vacancy on oxygen sites carries two positive charges because the oxygen that carried two negative charges left. In magnesium oxide, the free energy of the magnesium vacancy formation is lower than that of the oxygen vacancy formation, which means the former is more favorable. This leads to a higher concentration of magnesium ions on the surface, resulting in a net positive charge on the surface. This accumulated positive charge will build an internal field near the surface. This region is called the space charge layer. Let's draw it out. This will be electrical potential as a function of distance from the surface. To reflect what we just discussed, we have positive charges on the surface or interface. In the bulk, we have an unknown constant potential that we may call phi infinity. In the surface charge layer, the potential increases as it approaches the positively charged surface. We care about the difference between the potential in the space charge layer and the bulk. So we have the delta phi defined here, with delta phi naught as the space charge potential. In the bulk, the electron neutrality is obeyed as the potential is flat. Within the space charge layer, the electron neutrality is violated as we have the potential variation. The defect concentrations there are determined by electrochemical potential. This is in contrast to the bulk crystal, where the defect concentrations are generally controlled by chemical potential. This is the space charge effect in a nutshell. Next, we are going to dive into the analytical solution to the distribution of defect concentrations. Let's use vacancy on magnesium sites as an example to solve for the concentration distribution. The electrochemical potential of the vacancy is defined as the sum of chemical potential and the electrical components, with each term defined here. If you need a refresher on these potentials, please check out our video on potentials in electrochemistry. If we only consider only the 1D condition and introduce the Boltzmann statistics, we can rewrite the equation as a function of x, the distance from the surface, and rewrite the chemical potential as the chemical potential at the reference state plus kBT Lorentz activity of the vacancy. At the dilute limit or ideal solution conditions, activity can be approximated by concentration. Also, we know that the vacancy at the magnesium sites carry two negative charges, hence we have an updated equation like this. In the bulk, this equation still holds true. Assuming we are at electrochemical equilibrium conditions, the electrochemical potentials near the surface will be the same as in the bulk. By rearranging the equations, we get the equation for the concentration of vacancies on magnesium sites. We can draw the concentration profile. In the bulk, the concentration of vacancies is flat as determined by its chemical potential. Near the surface, it follows the equation we just derived. Similarly, for the vacancy on oxygen sites, we have the same concentrations in the bulk as the vacancy on magnesium sites, and the near surface concentration follows a very similar equation to the previous one. More generally, the concentration of a species under the space charge effect is equal to its concentration in the bulk, multiply this exponential term. To know the exact solution, we will need to know the answer of delta phi at position x. For the analytical solution to the delta phi x in 1D, we are going to use the gui chetman model for magnesium oxide. You probably have heard of this name if you have studied electrochemical double layer before. This is using the same solutions used for the double layer. We will come back with more stories on the double layer later.
for the Gui Chapman model to work, it is assumed that two major defects exist in the material, and they have the same absolute value of the valence. It also means in the bulk, the two defects will have the same concentration. It will also be a high temperature condition as both defects need to be mobile enough to equilibrate. To begin, we have the Poisson-Boltzmann equation which describes the distribution of the electrical potential in solution in the direction normal to a charged surface. The assumption allows us to substitute for the total volume charge density and get this equation. Solving this equation gives the analytical solution to the 1D potential profile. It's a messy equation, but in essence, we have this capital theta term that is not a function of distance. The cosine term is the normalized distance with respect to what is commonly known as the Debye length. This is the Debye length in the Gui Chapman model. It has a more general form when you consider other charges in the system. The Debye length is inversely proportional to the concentration of the defects. So in unduped ceramics, the Debye length can be tens of nanometers long, but in duped ceramics, it might only be a few nanometers. It takes about two times the Debye length from the surface for the defect concentration to reach the bulk concentration. This is independent of the surface potential. For a green boundary, we will have a space charge layer that spans approximately four times the Debye length. The fact that the Gui Chapman model was originally from electrochemistry but can be applied to the space charge layer brings the questions how similar is the space charge layer to the double layer? And how good is the Gui Chapman model at describing the double layer? The similarity between the space charge layer and the double layer is that they both arise in response to charged surfaces. However, due to the difference between solid solutions and liquid solutions, the model of the double layer has additional complications. Helmholtz proposed the oldest model for the double layer at the metal solution interface in 1881. He suggested that the excess charge on the metal attracts the same number of counterions to the interface. The two opposing layers are separated by a distance which determines the capacity. Gui in 1909 and Chapman in 1913 proposed the first statistical model by combining electrostatics with Boltzmann statistics, as shown in the last slide. It's equivalent to the Debye-Hackel theory, but the Gui-Chapman theory was several decades earlier. The theory is valid at low concentrations close to the point of zero charge. The theory successfully predicts a minimum capacity of double layer at this point. For higher concentrations and far away from the point of zero charge, the Gui-Chapman theory predicts double layer capacities way higher than the experimental values. To explain the deviation, Stern combined the ideas Helmholtz and Gui-Chapman, where ions can approach the electrode surface up to the outer Helmholtz plane. When there is no specific adsorption on the surface and at high concentrations and charge densities, the Helmholtz capacity, which is independent of the electrolyte concentrations, dominates. I hope this video helps you learn something new about the space charge effect and the double layer models. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. The main references in this video are listed here and in the description section. The videos in our eCam channel are only for educational purposes and knowledge sharing. Please subscribe, share, and like our videos to support our channel. Thank you for watching the video today. See you next time.